SoFloRadio.com and SoFloTelevision.com. Since the dawn of civilization, the elusive quest in pursuit of the perfect drink continues to evolve. Now more than ever, we reap the rewards of this passion. The perfect vintage, the finest brew, or a spirit of optimum age in class. And now, SoFloRadio.com invites you to discover the wonderful world of booze by the glass. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Buy the Glass. I'm your host, Brett Hubbard, and I'm welcoming you to explore another wonderful version of Buy the Glass Show. We are a show about beverage culture. Come to you every Thursday at 6 on SoFlo Radio and BuyTheGlassShow.com. And I'm very pleased to have my main man on the board, Ivan Bad. Yes, I am. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Daily, Rob, Daily Beer Review and Distilled Reflections in the House. Thanks again, Rob. What's up, man? Your, How are you doing? You're just like family around here, Rob. Yeah. You know, and poor, poor Jason couldn't make it. He's working too hard like a slave. <laughs> so I told him, you know, get a gig in radio. You don't have to work a day in your life, right, George? That's right, or 1.5 days in your life. <laughs> and we are so pleased and privileged to have Miss Pamela Abondo. She's yeah. the state rep for Angel's Envy and Papa's Pilar Rum, two of the best, finest spirits this side of the Mississippi or anywhere in there. And uh, just absolutely amazing stuff. Woo-hoo. Phenomenal, and we're so thankful to have her here. Why don't you sit down and have a seat? She's working like, so hard like a busy little bee over there. Sit down and enjoy yourself a little bit and talk to us. So yeah. lovely to have you talking to the mic. Hi there, how are you? I'm doing very well, and yourself? Good. Excellent. Really happy to be here. So, talk to us a little bit about. First, start with you. Now, you're the state brand manager. What is what does that mean to people out there? Um, actually, I'm for South Florida. I do okay. um, parts of Palm Beach. I do Fort Lauderdale and Miami Dade. Okay. So, um, there's actually a number of us that work. There's uh, Brian Donahue down in the Keys. There's Gigi Emerin that does up north, and there's uh, um. Chris Rich that does over on the uh, West Coast. Very so. cool. Yeah. So basically, that means that you're handling some pretty hot markets. Yeah, it's really exciting for me. It's got to be <laughs> exciting because these are some great brands. Now, we've had Papa's Pilar and Angel's Envy on the show before. They are two of my favorite spirits in the world, and I'm not just saying that. I've had the pleasure and the distinction to really taste them in all their forms and modes and at home because the people at Papa's Pilar are so f- just wonderful to send me beverages to my house, which mm-hmm. I love. Please do more. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I get to sit home and really just like drink the whole bottle and like really taste it, you know what I mean, over like a couple of weeks. Well, period. actually, I don't know what you mean. Sounds I, like I, a really Never. tough life. It's awesome. <laughs> I, I literally sat and drank a whole, like, over, like, the whole um, Christmas break. I drank the bottle of the dark, and it was uh, the, it just amazing. I just sat there. I got nuances. I took notes. I just love it. It's my favorite rum. Awesome. It's fantastic. Awesome. And, you know, no. it, moderation, but every day, moderation. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I don't yeah. think I've ever had the, the rum before. Maybe at the rum renaissance, I might have tried it, but that yeah. was, like, well, if you haven't, you're missing lost. out. I know but you've just had it before. I, I have, and it's great. It's awesome. But Ed brought over the Angel's Envy to my house. for we came over for dinner with the that family one time. Is oh, the latest God, distilled dude. reflections so that I just tweeted out on uh, Reddit by the Glass Show or by the Glass Show on Twitter. And also Facebook, I tweeted it. I, I booked it out. I don't know how you call that. Oh, uh, whatever. But I, I sent it out on Facebook. So you all can <laughs> read the distilled reflections review of these fine beverages. Now, we're going to get into a little bit of history. We'll start with one, go to the other. Now, one of our previous shows is you go to buytheglassshow.com is my my uh, website definitely have about 300 archive shows on there and you're going to notice one of the one of the best shows we ever did was definitely when we had Lincoln Henderson call in now he's mm-hmm. the master distiller angel the angels envy but he also has quite a history and you know him quite well and has some great reflections on on the man himself you want to go into that a little bit hey yeah we can cry no, you can cry if you want it's good radio i mean i'll get <laughs> you a tissue it's Valentine's Day. Like, sorry um no i mean he really is they they named him a living legend he's um the inaugural member of the bourbon hall of fame um he he really is responsible for the development of any uh any number of any of the large whiskeys out there right now. Um, you know, he's the master distiller and creator of Woodford Reserve. Um, he worked for Brown Foreman for 40 years um, in charge of whiskey development. So he did things like Gentleman Jack, Single Barrel, Forrester. Um, and even he worked with Centauri, the place that just uh, bought Makers and Jim Beam. He helped them to create Yamazaki. So How do you, oh, so you <laughs> think you'd be okay with that uh, <laughs> consolidation? You're in the whiskey world. How does how does how how do you feel about all that stuff? How does it How's it being taken out there you know what? Just since you brought I, it up. I personally I I see it kind of like Budweiser you know I mean it's, okay it's kind of a sad thing that it's not you know 
American owns, but I don't see them changing like the profile of the bourbons. So, I mean, they can't. If anything, so. it, it might <laughs> add some longevity to the brands yeah, over it's, time. It's going to give it a new. It's going to give it a new perspective, and okay. you know, and people, you know. How have you seen in the retail market any la- backlash or a positive aspect? I, you know, I was just in Total Wine earlier today, and I I didn't okay. see any problem with it whatsoever. Everybody, okay. uh, they're still, you know, everyone's talking about it, which is you know, good or bad, it's always something, you know. So. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's fantastic. Uh, So Angel's Envy, let's go into the name and the whole concept of it and before we get into how it's actually made. So Angel's Envy um, is basically, it's a play on the angel share. Um, Anything that's aged in a barrel, um, a little bit of it every... uh, a little bit of it is going to evaporate every uh, every year, usually around four to six percent. Um, so this is the angels' envy. This is the part that the angels didn't get. And, uh-huh. uh, yeah. So this is the part that we love. <laughs> Fantastic. And we talk about aging and barrel aging and finishing. Talk to me a little about about what those are and how they're. Well, first we start off with the grain bill. Mm-hmm. If you can get the into a little bill. bit of what the actual mash bill is, and then, how uh, they, then we'll move to that. It's going to be seventy-two percent corn, eighteen percent rye, and ten percent malted barley. Um, it's actually the same mash bill as like as Woodford, um, but you can tell there's a very distinct difference between how this tastes and how that tastes. And um, there truly is a number of, of um, bourbons out there that have the same mash bill. But um, we char- we use the you know the new charred oak barrels have to do that. And if it's going to be a bourbon, we uh, age it anywhere between four to six years. But then we finish it in used port wine barrels for about four months, and that really does add a, a different nuance to it. That just completely unique of itself why do you think that higher amount of corn upwards of 25 percent more than necessary what's around 50 is right around the necessary factor right usually it, yeah it's going to be 51 percent or higher. why do you why do you feel that that 70 you know in the 70s is a good factor for to, of, you know ratio you know it just adds you know just adds like that sweetness that's known for bourbon and that's really you know the corn is really what makes the difference between the bourbons and it, it's what makes everything stand out and uh you know the higher that you go the more you're going to get that you know the sweetness from the corn so what's the rest of it uh, comprised of malted barley malted barley um and then and then uh rye oh you actually use some mm-hmm. rye mm-hmm. people don't know that rye is a kind of a, a strange uh um, adjunct to use in a, in a grain bill because it's similar to wheat in the fact that it doesn't have a husk so it can be very it can it can really stick a mash up mm-hmm. you know what i mean if you're actually no i don't i don't know no, i don't <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm Pre- looking at you. Preach but on. I never, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it can be very, um, uh, it can it can be very sticky and gooey okay. and gummy when you're actually trying to make your mash. Now, when you make a mash, people at home that don't know, you you soak grain and corn in water, or you and it actually gelatinizes the corn does, and then the grains in there too, and then you put even a stickier amount of rye in there, and it's a pretty tremendously sticky, mo- uh, you know, gooey mess you got going there, right? Have you ever seen gooey it mess. done? Yeah. It pretty much is, right? <laughs> so, I mean, the thing that they're dealing with is pretty intense, and to make even more corn in there, it's got to be much harder to work with at that point. So I'm happy I don't have to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's intense. Yeah, it's some of the beautiful artwork here. I've seen some girls in uh, some, you know, in some, uh, you know, what gentlemen's clubs with that kind of artwork on their back. I've never, <laughs> <laughs> I've never uh, been into any of those places, so this I've only ever seen it on this box. George, you got to go. And on T-shirts. No, I the don't. girls are naked. I don't, I don't want to. No, they frighten me. <laughs> but this um, this box is really awesome. Did something really is. come into the box? Can, and Can we, can we show the people at home that box? <laughs> yeah. Just hold this it up is, uh, and uh, Actually, this, is beautiful. this box is what we um, what we give the uh, cast strength away. And if you're lucky enough to get a bottle of this, okay. um, there were about only 1,800 that we released this year. Uh, dubbed, um, dubbed the best whiskey, uh, best bourbon in the world. It was it tied for first on the top 120 um, spirits in the world with the Spirits Journal, and I'm very, very, very proud. Uh, last thing, pretty much that Lincoln uh, touched before he passed. Wow, so. <laughs> it's amazing. Now, talk to me a little bit about obviously cask strength as mm-hmm. opposed to normal strength. But uh, what what else are the differences with the cask strength? What makes it so amazing? Um, I mean, this is what's going to come straight out of the barrel. Okay. You know, this is this is without adding any water to you know bring down the proof. This is this is what it is straight from it. Oh, this is 123 proof. It's you know this is not your uh, <laughs> yeah that's do it. a shot and you know <laughs> party in the club. George, you know, did you ever see the old guy <laughs> at the track? George is going to yeah. put it behind his. I've ears. got a crazy straw <laughs> in the drawer over here. It's really fun to watch me drink through the crazy straw. But uh, I mean, you're more than welcome to try it. I brought it so you could. But um, it's always I fun, mean, George. It, what's awesome. amazing? It hey, really Rob, does not have that? the. Uh, We're the welcome bird to try it. Yeah, what it about does. one of those little George snifters for this? Yeah, thing. let's get some snifters, please, if you don't mind. Let Pamela pour it. <laughs> because she's the master over here. This is her oh, brand, yeah. okay. and we'd like to see you pour uh, it. I'm you, sure you, you guys can. Well, <laughs> we, you know, but that's part of the fun. You got. Uh, by the way, I really want to thank you for coming down. Yes. I know you're busy. Thank you so much. know what we're doing. We love having you here and talking about some of the finest bourbons in the world and rums and these are these are exquisite products folks we're here on by the glass show it's a show about beverage culture we come to you every thursday at six on 
by the glass show on soflowradio.com and we talk about the finer things in life such as angels envy bourbon and papa's pilar rum we are fortunate to have pamela ovando here and she's uh just giving us some of her tips and, and insight into some of the finest spirits in the world uh we're joined by rob who's uh distilled reflections he actually had a really great rate write up on this stuff and i can't wait to see what he writes about papa's pilar because it's going to be amazing no i'm i'm ready I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is the cast strength. This is the now, cast strength. Now, as I put strength. this to my nose, what kind of barrel notes are you? Are you should I get off this? I mean, uh, the 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 wood, the oak, vanilla, so yeah. vanilla, yeah. right, right off the oak. Mm-hmm. It's exceptional, and you're right. The uh, what's the? I always mess that word up. It's cognigers or conigers, right? Those, those are those those elements of the of the spirit that you don't want. They're not here at all. Conigers, conigers. You know they they're just they're just done. They're non-existent. They're those nasty mal odors that just you know get you. And that's what that really fusel alcohol mm-hmm. stench is often. But this just that's doesn't delicious. exist here. Spicy. Now, what was the proof on this? One twenty three. One twenty three, and it's just it's beautiful. It's delicious. It's, uh, I really get a lot of good dry fruits. I get raisin. I get fig. Right, and it actually mm. comes through. I mean, we're talking 123 proof spirit here, That's and it, good. it yeah. just comes That's like through. Maple maple syrup, right? right? You get that molasses. <laughs> That's amazing. Now, talk to me about the finish. You finish in. We finish it in port wine barrels. Um, so, so, are those uh, a port wine? Obviously, a people at home to know is a fortified wine that is has to be fortified and aged on its own. And then when they take that barrel, once it's been used for the port and the secondary use for, it, is it's filled with the whiskey. At what point is it filled? Is it now, after it's uh, in the barrel for a certain amount of time mm-hmm. and it's been blended from that barrel, do they then cut it down to a normal strength with water and then put it in the finish or they finish right? Finish it. And then they cut it afterwards? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, is that, I've, always been, I've always been intrigued by the fact that they just, they just basically just take it right down to its alcoholic strength with water. It's just that simple. It's not some big... It's not some big production, you know. I mean, obviously, everybody want to make sure that the water is good and, you know. Of course. But, yeah, uh, yeah it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a huge production, but, you know. This is yeah, the past strength. I want to. No, I want to say, need, don't so. don't do that. You don't really have to do that. Just, I'll take it like it is. The thing yeah. is, there's certain laws and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I guess, and so also you, you buy can. this at Total Wine. Damn laws. If you can, if you can still find a bottle, yes. Right. Um, Total cool. Wine did get it. Um, I think maybe then. most of their stores got about two bottles. Each this is what I'm going like. to be blowing my lottery money on. I think, <laughs> this kind it of actually, stuff. It actually it really <laughs> wasn't expensive. Um, you know, some stores actually did sell it for three or four hundred dollars, which was crazy. But yeah. um, it really, I think most of the stores that were selling it was about one hundred and eighty dollars. And considering what you get inside of it, it's that was a great deal. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It really is. And then, of course, we have our rye and then the regular bourbon, too. So. So it talks about uh, malcontent when we talk about Lincoln, mm-hmm. you know, and his uh, 200 years of tradition meets his independent master craftsman's instinct. So talk to me about some of the insight you have when it comes to him as far as, you know, taking this to the next level and creating the Angel's Envy. I mean, well, this is what this is what, you know, an entire uh, career in the whiskey business leads up to. You know, this is uh, something I guess that he always had, like in the back of his mind that he really wanted to do. And. You know, being working for another company, you know, he doesn't necessarily have the freedom that he wants to to really go off and create what he really wanted to do. And, uh, you know, even though, you know, he's <laughs> what I think in his 80s, you know, and it's like and when he did this, it's, <laughs> you know, he still came out with this and it just it just a great man. And um, I mean, that's why we say he's a malcontent just because he he truly like everything. You know, this is going to be finished in port wine barrels. This this rye is finished in Caribbean rum barrels um, that formerly housed cognac. Wow. So like there's just he just always has like those little nuances that nobody else, you know, had put together yet before. So it's absolutely amazing. The taste profile is just predominant with dried fruits, uh, really wonderful characters and molasses. And it picks up all that nice wood notes and quality of the vanilla. And it's just nice warming. It's perfect for a nice cold night like tonight to have a nice warming drink that has so much flavor. But still has a very good contrast of alcohol in the sides of my tongue and the astringency that it should have i mean it's right on the right on the right on the money (laughs) absolutely absolutely amazing fantastic all right so maybe we will what we're going to do talk to me a little bit about what we're going to do here you brought some stuff to mix with what are Mm -hmm. some of the drinks that we can look forward to in the next segment here oh well i'll let you you know you can name them whatever you like oh (laughs) Oh, 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 don't don't judge that (laughs) (laughs) i live for this the salty (laughs) banana what yeah (laughs) (laughs) stop stop stealing my names now (laughs) scratch that one off the list now (laughs) yeah um but um just a a couple of things that we've played around with um you know 
just I figure we'll do something that's going to be really easy that people at home can make really, Absolutely. you know, at home and not going to be scared to, you know, like I said, it's Valentine's Day is tomorrow. So they're sure. not going to spend a week infusing something. And, you know, we did do a uh, nice couple of drinks for Christmas time. They sent me the bottles. I saw and, uh, those were <laughs> those were interesting and uh, <laughs> and uh, very cool. But the thing was, is that I was. We don't really have, we have a refrigerator, but I didn't have a microwave and a way to do like some of those drinks. Guys, what's what's the website for the Papa's Pilar to get some of the best drinks? PapasPilar.com. Go to that, PapasPilar.com, and you can really find some drinks that if you're willing, if you have the time and you really want to put some time into it, and believe me, it's well worth it. They take, some of them take a couple of days to make and a couple, mm. uh, even a week that just has to sit and, and so absorb and just, you know, um, uh, what's it called, reduce naturally and that type of thing they make some amazing drinks and these people you know one thing i'd like to mention was the uh book to have and have another from the papa's pilar um the gentleman i forgot his name unfortunately off the top of my mm. head it, he wrote the book and he was just it, it was given to me and it was just an amazing book and it was the hemingway book to have and have another and there's just so many really great drinks in there that i think they made this rum to be so drinks are really a big part of this whole overall of these spirits overall correct I'm sorry. <laughs> drinks are yeah. making. I was like, um, I was thinking, yeah, I mean, drinks, are obviously, I mean, that's what people are going to do with it. You know, yeah. they're not just going to well, stare at the bottles. People, I mean, the bottles are pretty. Some, some, <laughs> some, no, but sp spirits, but, uh, spirits can be, uh, some spirits are just, you know, people don't, you know, really make, make drinks out of them. But some of these drinks that you've made out of these are amazing. They really work well either way. Is what I'm trying yeah, to say. If you go, yeah. If you go on uh, papasplower.com there, we really have uh, mixologists from all over the country that have made cocktails for us. Um, the uh, to have and to have another that would be uh, Phil Green's book. Phil Green, sorry. Yeah, um, he actually, you know, th that um, is actually, you know, separate of Pilar, but it was it was a good timing because you know he he launched a book about Hemingway and about rum culture. Yeah. At the exact same time that we <laughs> well, <laughs> I was sitting Papa's home during Pilar, Christmas break, and it's like <laughs> reading the book and, and drinking Papa's Pilar, and I felt like you know I felt like I was you know I wanted to go hike into the Northern Territory of Michigan or something. Yeah. I mean, fight, <laughs> fight in World War One or something. So, no, I'm just kidding. That worked no, out. No way. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out. Well I like a man. <laughs> turn, turn, turn over HGTV and it was good. I just made a daiquiri and went with it. <laughs> okay. You know, I listened. I listened to that show that you had um, where you were trying to figure it out, and you're like, you know, there was this. Uh, this drink that Hemingway used to drink and I feel like gosh it had grapefruit in it and I'm like screaming in my head you know it's called a Hemingway daiquiri yeah, you know funny? I don't know if, if you heard this. I just was up in St. Augustine and they have this place there called the Ice Pit and it's absolutely amazing have you mm -hmm, heard of this mm -hmm. place yeah. and I had a Hemingway, da a Hemingway daiquiri there and it was with the grapefruit in it, mm -hmm. and it was absolutely exquisite and that place I'll show you pictures I'll put some pictures up on uh, by the glass or on my uh, bread of Brett by the glass on my Facebook so you guys can see the recipes are out of this world. Anyway, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, Pamela is going to make us some great drinks, and we're going to celebrate yeah. Valentine's Day so everybody can, you know, have fun with their lovelies. Some hugs. Hugs and uh, kisses yeah. and angels envy <laughs> is in store for you. When we come back, on by the glass show on SoFloRadio.com. SoFloRadio.com. No ugly chicks allowed. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with Key Information Solutions. Providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support. Hardware and custom built computers. Let Key Information Solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call Key Information Solutions now. 954 Seven three 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 seven four. That's nine five four nine seven three thirty three seventy four. Or visit keyinformation.com. Strawberry patch and smoothie. Come Get your hands on. off me! Huh? I said, don't touch me. I shouldn't have went to that party last night. Now I'm seeing talking fruit. You're not dreaming, Bubba, and you're not putting me in that blender to do. But you're just a fruit. <laughs> Who you calling a fruit? You are. You're, you're a delicious passion fruit. Why, sure I'm passionate. How would you like to be blended, huh? I got right, you know. Customers waiting. You gotta go. Yeah, but wait, you can poop. <laughs> At Power Smoothie in Aventura, we show fruit no mercy. Always fresh, always delicious. To make the best smoothies and wraps on earth, try our new cilantro lime delicious wrap or our hot chipotle chicken. Power Smoothie in Aventura, located just north of the Aventura Mall in the Promenade Shops. Or call 305-792-5338. 
Open seven days a week. When you're ready to actually lose weight safely and steadily while being monitored by a physician, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson is there for you. The family medicine practice was established by her father in 1956 and continues as a medical practice that now specializes in weight reduction. Dr. Kim Jacobson joined the practice 20 years ago as both a family medicine practitioner and weight loss specialist. The weight loss clinic utilizes a combination of appetite suppression medication and vitamins to produce great results, usually three to four pounds per week for most patients. Now you can change your lifestyle while still enjoying your own food, just less of it. They offer a choice of two, three, or four week plans. So whether you just need to lose a few pounds or a lot, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson can help you. They're located at 5454 Northeast 4th Avenue in Miami, just two blocks west of 54th Street and Biscayne Boulevard. Call them at 305-751-0091. They'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. That's 305-751-0091. Get started on a beautiful new body today with Dr. Kim Jacobson and the weight loss clinic. The most important online See? Radio station it's easier than world. ever to listen to SoFlo on the air and everywhere. On any computer, any mobile device, iPhone, iTouch, and anywhere you are, just hit SoFloRadio.com. Tell your friends about South Florida's radio network, SoFloRadio.com. And now we return you to By the Glass. Hey everybody, welcome back to Buy the Glass and our real lackluster bumper music. But that's okay because it is Valentine's Day and just to give it as romantic. Right? Yeah, I'm feeling romantic. I, 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 you might too. get a hug tonight. All right. Watch, <laughs> watch your cock. I'll hug your Rob. <laughs> watch your cockspur. Anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got the ball. Anyway, welcome back to Buy the Glass Show. And I am very thrilled and pleased to have Miss Pamela Obando. And she's in here talking about Angel's Envy and Papa's Pilar Rum. And these are some of the most amazing spirits you're ever going to try in your life. Absolutely. I mean, you're talking about over 200 years of tradition meets an independent master craftsman's instinct to just make the amazing uh, bourbon that it is today. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make some really wonderful Valentine's Day drinks. You ever notice how many people say Valentine's Day? Why do they do that? Why? I always wonder. Does it, do you know anybody who says Valentine's Day? <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I just had to get that out there because I have a radio show. Anyway, so it's Valentine's Day and uh, we're going to make some really wonderful drinks. And name them. And we're going to name them. We're, we're going to give them names. George is going to give the uh, the salty name banana. them. Uh, oh, you're you're right. No, that's yours now. That's mine now. Okay. Raising, raising the bar for me now. I'm raising Brett. the bar. So how about the bigote? Oh yeah, right. I wore my Valentine's that's hat. That's Spanish for is that red. I should have wore a red hat. Oh, you did wear a red that. hat. Damn it! I knew I was off. <clears throat> uh, but um, anyway, so yeah, <laughs> we're we're very pleased. And um, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that most people, and I said this right before the break because this is how a lot of people feel. What, could you mix the Angel's Envy? It's such good bourbon. Why would you? And then exactly, what did you say, Rob? I said no, no way, man. No way. When I mixed <laughs> I'm a, that, I almost cursed. But <laughs> you did almost curse. But the fact of the matter is, is that Pamela said absolutely you can mix it, and it's not as it, just because it tastes so good and a master made it. It's not necessarily that pretentious that it can't be used in a mixed drink. Now, I'm not sure what the retail is on it. What's the retail on, on the regular Angel, Angel's Envy? About 48 About 48 for a 750 which is ballpark for good bourbon. And uh, definitely something that you can mix into some wonderful drinks. Now, there are the traditional bourbon drinks, uh, like the, uh, the Manhattan, right? And, uh, you know, stuff like that. But uh, which which I'm sure is perfect with an angel's envy. But she mixed up some really exquisite stuff. Now, I want, oh, here we go. Beautiful. Look how this absolutely lovely that is. Take a picture. Of that. Wow. Oh wow. Here's what she did. She cut out the strawberry so it looks like oh, a little. I'm gonna heart. copy that trick. That's absolutely <laughs> amazing. very soon. So, here we go. All right. And let me just take a strawberry floater of that. there. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, George, since this one's so cute, I'm gonna let you. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you you name it. Um, oh, all right. What's in it, um, Pamela? So this is going to have Angel's Envy bourbon. Um, okay. And then it's the, you know, the 86.6 proof. Um, then we're going to have um, a little bit of Godiva dark chocolate, um, Frangelico, uh, Tres Leches. Wow. wow. And then on the top is uh, whipped cream just made with uh, heavy whipping cream, sugar, Chambord, and Frangelico. And Frangelico is like hazelnut? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Is it is it Italian, Frangelica? Yeah, I'm just trying to get it because there's tres leches in here, so we definitely got a Latin thing going on. Yeah, it's a little bit of Latin, a little bit of Italian, you know, a little bit of country, a little bit, a little bit of rock and roll. 
It's definitely got that country flick, country country rock. The Angels Envy. It's kind of like a country rock thing. You know what I mean? So. And a tres leches. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna try to work something right, with George, the chocolate. Let me taste. Oh. There we go. Yeah, there's, only, there's only a couple here to go around. All right, okay. I would just gonna hug that from a different that. side of the glass. But it is Valentine's Day. There's a lot of. Ba- I already I put a lot of backwash in there. Just warning you. No, this is kind of like a, right. a spin on a side. cocktail. My friend Shannon Styles made um, over at the Royal Pig. He um, we call it Dark Angel, and he um, it's basically just e- even parts of Godiva with uh, Angel's Envy, and it works out great. And I um, like the chocolate. It was good because. A lot of girls kind of get scared. I mean, now it's getting better because it's starting to, you know, the bourbon business is really going crazy. George is very familiar with that. Girls, girls getting scared. <laughs> girls getting they scared. wrote a song about it. Actually, <laughs> Georgie, Georgie. And all the girls run away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> made the cry. Yeah. But uh, e- this is like a really easy way for you know to get that, a nice intro into it because um, you know Angels Envy doesn't have that thickness that's associated with a lot of bourbon. It's very, um, you know, it's got a very easy taste to it, and then to mix yeah, it with it chocolate just makes it. It was. It's absolutely. <laughs> Perfect and uh, creamy and easy going and uh, just really nice <laughs> and and the fact of the matter is is it's romantic, it's a real good way to to make a romantic yeah, drink that uh, do we have to um, anybody arm, can arm wrestle over the strawberry? <laughs> no, it's all you strawberry. Yeah, nothing's worse than going out on Valentine's Day and making a mess of yourself in public. So you stay home, you make yourself some cocktails for you and your you know your loved one and be done with it the only person who laughs at you is him uh, there you <laughs> go <laughs> see that was some good tips good information comes to you right from by the glass show i wrote it down <laughs> definitely get your tips from by the glass show that sounds good to me go home and get uh, sloppy drunk and stay that way and stay there <laughs> yeah fantastic so here's the thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask her to write either write it down mm-hmm. pam to write it down or, or give it to me so i can put these up on you know by the glass show or on my website the recipes or, yeah the recipes because people should know how to, to make these and the, and the cool thing is that pamela comes in and she just talks about this stuff and she just kind of made these off the top of her head now are these ones that are tried and true that you've been kind of had in your back pocket over the years or is this something you said hey you know you're that good that you can just come up with it off the cuff this is something i threw on my head this morning no. that's fantastic <laughs> no like oh, i said cool. shannon my friend shannon actually you know made the basis for me to like where i started thinking about the whole chocolate martini thing and then i just kind of built off of it today so that's great that's really cool and a lot of that stuff can be found easily in your local total wine mm-hmm. and, uh, and and all whatnot. of these actually are found in total wine abc crown Publix, and dixie so Really, they have them in Winn-Dixie, Publix. huh? Yep, so there's oh, no yeah, excuse for you to not now. grab them. Right. <laughs> now, you basically, of course, you're the supplier, so you deal with all the, all those types of things like, you know, Publixes and, and restaurants and hotels and whatnot. Where do you, I mean... Uh, well, I'm lucky. My boss, Pete Fernandez, actually deals with the majority of those. Like, he does, he goes in and makes all those uh, big connections chain, with Publix and everything. I yeah, can't even they, they stink. You imagine how that. he does it. <laughs> yeah, no, you believe me, I know all about chain distribution. But um, that's that's cool. Okay, so it frees you up to be out in, in the bars and whatnot, and that mm-hmm. type of thing. Right so where I talk, like to it. Me, talk, <laughs> to me, talk to me about some of the promotions that you would have if I was going to go to the classic Angels Envy promotion. What can we expect to see? Oh, well, Angels Envy, obviously. I mean, you see the wings on the back of the on the back of the bottles, so and the wings on the on the box itself. Uh, so. Um, we have the girls with the angel wings. Um, you can't you can't miss them when they come in because the angel wings are. They uh, really wear the wings. They wear the wings. Where the wings what do they, are, what do they look like? Before. The wings have about. I got my own pair. Say, yeah, the they're seat. much bigger than those pair right there. George has wings. <laughs> what are you doing with wings, George? I noticed that. Dude, you know I'm George. Often. Did you yeah. put those out because it's an angel's envy? <laughs> no, day? no, those are my Why wings. Why aren't you wearing them, George? You stole them from the I, girls I as they ran away from him. Hand me my wings, please. Come on, we got to have George put these wings on because he actually has wings. I have wings. Look at everybody. George has wings. That's right. <laughs> Hold on a so second. Yeah. Somebody ring a bell. See, Every time dark... a bell rings, George <laughs> gets his wings. There's the dark angel right there. That's the dark angel. <laughs> Pamela, something tells me that I you're just, a little bit of a dark angel. I would like everyone yourself. to know this is not the only pair of wings that I own. I also have golden Isis wings. I'm sure that oh you do. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. Jeez. Bragger. I'm an interesting person. <laughs> you are. Do you need help putting your wings on? Well, I didn't. I normally don't have headsets. <laughs> you can take headsets them off. On whatever okay. I can't believe it. Just as we're talking about angel wings, I literally look, look over up. and I see a pair sitting there. <laughs> and it's funny too, Coach George, because the way that you have them and you can put them on, they look at that. Come on, pose, like, man. There pose. We are. Definitely got to pose. Give me a bottle, please. <laughs> Here. Let's, give let's get give a me bottle. a side shot. And uh, <laughs> you know, angels envy. You know, turn so we can see you with your wings. Unbelievable. That's fantastic. <laughs> George really working the part here. Yeah, no, the other way. Oh, like that way. <laughs> oh my lord, look George back, is really back. working it. Work it, George. Oh my lord! It's like a freaking. Oh, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> this is one for the website. This, this is uh, this is like Wait a. Minute, this is my better side here. Uh, don't bad. knock me this over with your wings, board. George. Watch out! You might. Right. <laughs> and, and the website. 
But actually, these bottles, um, both bottles for the Pilar and the Angels Envy, we have a really awesome marketing team down in um, in Coral Gables. Right. As oh, you do? It's um, Crispin Porter and Bogowski, and they uh, they designed the bottle work for both of these. This one, um, the Pilar actually got um, one in the World Spirits competition for the bottle design. So. I believe it because <laughs> I remember when we first had the first show and we were talking about it. I love the bottle, the, right the feel in my hand. The way that it's got a big meaty cap made of metal. Mm -hmm. And then the chain is like second to none. It's yeah. just the coolest bottle going. And I didn't even know that it was a World War One canteen. I had no idea. I just loved it, just loved it, loved it. it. And then when I read it in the notes that it was like, a canteen, oh, yeah. it was like even 10 times cooler. <laughs> it's just like the most happening bottle going out there. For happening. Sure. It really is. And, uh, okay, so... It is a bourbon, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a classic technical bourbon. That what are some of the things that go into making it a specifically a bourbon? Um, well, I mean everything. I mean, there's just there's so many different nuances, but like um, everything. As from far as geography, I, I mean mostly because geography. We, the only thing about the geography is it has to be made in the United States. It um, doesn't have to be in Bourbon County, Kentucky. It's not in Bourbon. It's not Champagne. You could make it here. <laughs> so, right. but uh, yeah, you could make it here technically. I know. But, here, uh, here's the thing about like the show. Like I know all this stuff, but I'm the guy interviewing, so I'm trying to get the guest to say it. It works better. I get, it? It? Okay, get it, everybody. Okay. No, no, we're gonna open a distillery in Maryland. Okay. This isn't the Dukes of Hazard. Let's try not to do. That. <laughs> um, blow yourselves up, but um, no, no we um, wanted to still. Me and George are gonna put a still in the back. We yeah. are. <laughs> I'll keep watch for the revenueers. You yeah. mind the coil. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it, I mean, probably what ninety five percent of them are gonna be made in Kentucky, of course. But um, right. we're you know we're in Bardstown right now. Our distillery is gonna be um, right in the heart of Louisville, right across from the Louisville Sluggers um, Stadium. Um, it's being made right now. Um, should be done hopefully at the beginning of next year, and it's going to be awesome. Are you a big fan of horse racing? Why don't you? you know what? I I used to I used to watch it like if I went to the casino. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like it's not like I just watch it I in just general. Say Louisville, you know what I mean? That's like you know horse my, country, and I'm a huge horse racing fan myself. So I just thought we'd be up in Gold Stream. Yeah, my my extent on the Kentucky Derby is like, what's the coolest name on a horse? I want that one. Okay, that's fair enough. <laughs> it's a very good system, I'm told. <laughs> well, Woodford Reserve, they actually have Woodford they Reserve. Used, they used to own horses. Absolutely. Well, it's you know, it's Kentucky. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, no, I go to the uh, Fountain of Youth, Florida Derby, uh, the Don, and all the wonderful handicaps that lead up to the. Uh, and then Florida has some I of the best all here at, at uh, Gulfstream, <laughs> and they're absolutely amazing. Yeah. Some of the prime three-year-olds in the world. Anyway, we'll get back to uh, <laughs> prime three-year-olds in the world. Back to uh, spirits, <laughs> one of my other passions and loves. <laughs> anyway, so this is absolutely amazing, and that was a wonderful drink. And let's Good. let George put a name on it. George, since you're wearing the wings, oh, sweetheart, my. what sweetheart. would you like to call this <laughs> lovely little diddity? El Angel Chocolate. <laughs> cha -cha -cha -cha. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak Spanish, Pamela? <laughs> that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I bet it's hard to you, that was probably, yeah. That's probably like three years of Spanish class, huh? It's more where that came from, baby. <laughs> now he's Cuban. <laughs> you didn't he, know? You didn't know. Oh, he's got, he's he got makes the Spanish sound. He makes me nasty with my ID. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer tan all around. <laughs> totally. Actually, that looked he's about no the same way that the, cocktail He's no stranger like to a bottom. cane field, if you catch my drift. <laughs> no. El Cubano over here. <laughs> I was raised by rednecks, so that's why I don't have an accent. I thought cotton was a verb till I was 14. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And y'all? <laughs> that's Fantastic. the plural of you. <laughs> so, yeah. we, we came up with, what was it again? El Angel Chocolate. Angel or the chocolate, chocolate angel for your gringos there. <laughs> it's a chocolate angel. That's beautiful. Sure. I love it. That's that's uh, definitely, and it's white. It's so. chocolatey, right? Mm. Right. I thought this through. I've been thinking about it this whole time. Okay. Okay. So, so explain it to us. Explain well, she's got. She's got. Uh, she's got. Uh, uh, what is it? Diva chocolate. Bar. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and you know, and and the and the bourbon, of course. I mean, those are the when I taste it. Those are the main. I mean, all the other stuff is good. I taste the hazelnut, which is Nutella. I mean, that's ah you know, hazelnut. You know, Nutella. It, I mean, it's good lord. It's like Nutella and bacon. I could just live off those two things. So beautiful. But the active ingredient in Nutella <clears throat> is is the chocolate, and I think that the hazelnut is a complement to the chocolate rather than the other way around. That the chocolate is the primary flavor wow. in this, other than other than the bourbon, uh, which is so good. So, so that's what home. that's what I felt like, and of course, um, because it's got the tres leches in it and the frangelica, I wanted to give it a, a Latin name. So basically, so. fantastic. Everybody home, we have the Godiva chocolate, we have the Frangelico, the Chambord, and the Trace Leches. Now, 
Any, I've, I've been to a lot of your liquor cabinets out there. You all have this because, you know, yep. all those great cordials I, that you love to I have, have drinks with. So it's real easy to, to, to get a hold of any of these. She's got the little finger bottles here. They're cheap. They're a couple bucks a piece. And think how I think here's the best thing about this show. Go home and make this drink and impress the hell out of someone. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. OK, like you really know what you're doing, but you just learned. You know, the, the whole thing with the ago. strawberry. I am so stealing that or I'm going to, <laughs> strawberry is I'm going to bite that, as they say, you know, in the rap sampling community. The cool thing, like just. Honestly, it's so cheesy, but like that whipped cream, it's so easy to make. You saw me just throw it inside of a tin. It's yeah. cream with sugar, and then you just throw a little get uh, well, the uh, shampoo or cheesy, whatever to give so. it something. But it it has a weight to it, so you can put you can right. Is that what is that what the you thing can is? Say happy birthday on the top. You can. It's the whipped cream that does that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. You know, if you look up cheesy in the dictionary, big old picture. That's me. Actually, no. That's with the wings and all. If you look up gullible, true story. Uh, somebody told me that gullible wasn't in the dictionary. So I looked it up, <laughs> and, it's true. and it is in the dictionary. It is. And so, and my picture is next to it. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's fantastic. Right. I was definition C. You, <laughs> unbelievable. So what we'll do is, you know, let's take another quick break, and we'll let her clean up here and get ready for for round number two. But when we come back, we're going to go into Papa's Pilar Rum, and I love the history of the Hemingway Estate. I loved how it's made and blended and all that. We're going to get into that, and then we're going to make some amazing drinks with one of the rums I love the most, the Papa. Papa's Pilar when we come back on By the Glass Show on SoFloRadio.com. Longer, firmer, and fully packed with flavor. SoFloRadio.com. CBC5 is the executive liaison for all your building compliance needs. Serving South Florida from the Palm Beaches to Key West, CBC5 delivers five-star service that brings... Oh, let's just say BC, a BDQ, whatever. CBC5. It stands for Complete Building Compliance. Oh, well, I ain't building nothing, so what can they do for me? Well, they do more than plan, review, and permitting. They help the little guy cut through red tape. I got duct tape holding together my carport. Well, CBC5 can help. Let Let them deal with bureaucrats. They helped George Rodriguez solve a sewer lateral problem, and they saved him a ton of money and hassles. By City Hall, who can do that? CBC5 can do that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a commercial to finish. Contact Shoddy the Hottie at CBC5 786 255 3851 or log on to CBC5.net. That's CBC5.net. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions. Providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support. Hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call Key Information Solutions now. 954 Seven three 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 seven four. That's nine five four nine seven three thirty three seventy four. Or visit keyinformation.com. Samantha Natalie, a great wall featuring watching my world change from my window. Sky high. Are you- Samantha Natalie. A great wall. Available now on iTunes. Go to samanthanatalymusic.com. We asked this gentleman to participate in our radio taste test challenge. On one table, terrestrial radio. On the other, soflowradio.com. Do you have your blindfold on? Yes. Try a bite of this. <clears throat> oh, God, that's awful. Tastes like the soiled briefs of a lonely fat man. You just had a taste of all sports and corporate back right wing assassin talk radio. Now give this a try. Mmm. That's gotta be soflowradio.com. Mmm. Entertaining, funny, informative. I love it. Can I have more? Soflowradio.com. A full plate of delicious entertainment. And now we return you to By the Glass.
Hey everybody, welcome back to By the Glass Show. We're having a wonderful time here and uh, just enjoying some unbelievable libations and spirits. We have the wonderful Pamela Obando in, and she is uh, making some unbelievable drinks. She is wonderful. Time. She really is. She's uh, taking time out of her busy, busy schedule to come down here and share her Angel's Envy and Papa's Pilar rum with us. And uh, what a wonderful job she's got. She just spreads the joy of the wonderful rums and spirits to all of South Florida. And uh, these are amazing products, my friend. These do these are not your run-of-the-mill average at all. I mean, these are the like, exceptional. <clears throat> I, I, I consider them the highest echelon. I couldn't do this job. In their she has to take alcohol to other people, and I know it would, George. It would never make it there. It would never make it there if they gave it to me. I'd be like, "Yeah, I'll go get George, this they, to somebody." Had your number for quite some time. Sure, I know. All right, totally disqualified. <laughs> You're done. Anyway, but uh, we we do thank you because it is Valentine's Day, and it's time to be with the ones you loved, love. So basically, you are he, he, here with us to enjoy, a, you know, the creation of some amazing uh, spirits, uh, more actually cocktails. To, uh, to really have a wonderful evening. And uh, what we've done is we put together some really interesting, simple-to-make drinks. Um, I know that when she kind of spouted it off there, that everything she put in it, it, it didn't seem simple, but it really kind of is. It's all those stuff that you have in your cabinet, the, fran- the Frangelicos and the Chambors and the, you know, and the white chocolate Godivas and the, all that kind of stuff that you normally have. And I'm sure there's stuff that you can substitute if you need to. But just the fact of the matter is these really great base spirits that she uses, these wonderful products like the Pilar... Papa's Pilar and the Angel's Envy are just such quality, fine tasting products that they just make such amazing drinks. And uh, that really is the root of it all. So Pamela's over there and she is putting together really what looks like a pretty, very interesting drink. And uh, I see her opening up, what is that, a Prosecco? Dude, she gave it to me to do. I know. Don't point it at us, uh, Rob. So yeah. make sure you put your no, hand over the top, Rob. To, no, There's okay. more than one close call. Opened, yeah, don't point it at Pamela either. Last time window. somebody opened yeah, one of those in here, Rob's opening a a, um, a sparkling wine of some sort. And we've actually literally, I think I still yeah. see the mark in the ceiling from when we let somebody else do it. Oh, he's a pro. He's a pro. And by the way, he spills it all over himself. It was okay. beer. Uh, it was beer, yeah. The last yeah. Time. There are beers with and it's pork. shot out like a cannon. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so very cool. And this one is really pretty. Wow. Woo-hoo. This is, now, this is amazing. So what she's doing over there is she makes the spirit, but then she also mixes many different things in there. And you know how when you make a mixed drink, <laughs> you sometimes use, like, uh, soda water or whatever? You can always use beer or, or sparkling wine to create that same carbonation in the drink, which gives it a whole other essence of flavor. So this is great. What we're going to do is as soon as she's done here, fantastic. She's going to sit down, and we're going to talk a little bit about the history behind Papa's Pilar and the whole Hemingway estate and whatnot. So oh unbelievable. Look at first, that. first the tell hell, me, is that a squid? <laughs> okay, so this is beautiful. Okay, this is absolutely gorgeous. Tell me how you made it. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Very cool. Absolutely. <clears throat> so this is kind of like um, a take on a scrapino, which is a pretty um, normal so is a squid. Italian uh, cocktail. But um, what you're seeing in the top, that's a hibiscus flower. Wow. Um, there's, um, there's a great little brand here that I found in Total Wine earlier that just, um, they're hibiscus flowers set in syrup, and okay. um, they're edible, totally really? edible. They almost have like a, a crazy kind of like a cranberry-ish type taste to them. They're um, sweet with a little bitterness. That's amazing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is, uh, a scrabino basically is usually wow. just made with lemon sorbet, um, a little like lemon cello, and then sometimes, you know, p- people will put like a vodka inside, but then, you know, it's always got Prosecco as well. So this is, uh, this is just, just that pretty much and with a little hibiscus the, syrup and you added the Papa's blonde Pilar rum. Blonde instead of, uh, mm-hmm, how do vodka. you feel the blonde rum interacts with something like that as opposed to a vodka? You know, I, I love having the blonde rum with stuff that's going to be a little bit more bitter, a little more tart. Um, you know, I, I put it with the grapefruit. I think it works awesome which is great because that's like the whole Hemingway daiquiri thing so yes. that worked out perfect but um I like it with you know anything that has like a little citrus to it just makes it like really open up because it has a little bit of a sweetness to it it creates know? a balancing effect mm-hmm. right? definitely that's absolutely amazing what are the better drinks I've tasted how long did it take you to put it together a couple minutes yeah like the break yeah. <laughs> so this is another one she's gonna give me the recipe for and mm-hmm. she just shakes it up and makes it look beautiful it's it has that pink bellini look to it for those of you at, yeah. at home that don't know what a scorpino is but it's it's right in there rob uh <clears throat> comments not i don't know what a scorpino it's a little it's no <laughs> i didn't know, say I, it's I amazing know, and wonderful no, i didn't know it what to so good. either no it's like it has like can this. i eat that flower yes it's edible george like well, your underwear it kind of touched my nose while i was drinking it so i think i should eat it you should uh, you should definitely <laughs> eat it yeah no, it has like this, like mm. very. It's very thick. 
Mm-hmm. That's the yummiest flour I've but ever eaten. But it's sweet and good and great. Yeah. No, I no, I like it. Fantastic. Yeah, it's meant to be like almost, you know, almost like a frozen cocktail, but not. I kind of feel bad considering like so many people are like freezing to death right now. And oh, I'm yeah. like, but it's, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. 80 yeah. degrees down yeah. here. Yeah. Almost, and we don't, we, don't, we never feel bad for that. It's so crazy. I was literally it's sitting. <laughs> I was sitting somewhere in, in a bar, like you know, making a sales call or whatever. And I'm looking at the television, and it's like, like that's really happening. <clears throat> yeah, they, <laughs> like, that's what I'm like. They can't even like they're stuck on the freaking they highway. They, they can't, can't even the get home from New work. These poor bastards. Don't go out on the street. My sister lives in It's literally like. Hot outside. I know our windows are open. I'm like I'm complaining. Yeah. I'm in my barefoot you know, shorts. My AC doesn't work. I know I didn't have my AC on in my car, and I'm like, why is it so hot in here? And I'm like, yeah. oh, if I turn the AC on, it would be very. <laughs> it's ridiculous. A different. Yeah, it's amazing. But it got so what? cold last night. I had to close the windows. Yeah, oh my there lord. It is. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's, it, it's it's Florida, and you know what? And it's hot here. And well, I if, just figure this is if you're listening cocktail. to us anywhere north of Orlando, please go out <laughs> to get some Angel's Envy. It's really nice and warm. Yeah, it. warm it up in your hand. It really it warm it, it just warms you up. I mean, it's mm-hmm. a wonderful. It's, it's it's a fantastic. Glad I didn't have to share. Yeah, no, you don't have to share. You, you're on the right side of the table. Anyway, so uh, this is awesome. Let's get into Papa's Pilar as okay. the brand as a whole. Now, obviously, the Hemingway Estate. Talk to me about how they came, how this whole rum came about, and and the concept behind it. If you don't mind. Oh wow! I mean, there's just uh, you know, the Hemingways really they have never allowed their name to be put onto anything, anything to do with a, a spirit brand before. And the Hemingway <laughs> Estate. I mean, everybody involved is just uh, very gracious, amazingly, you know, just wonderful people. Um, and the cool thing about Papa's Pilar is, um, I mean, it really is a huge group of people that have really gone into the making of this brand. It's no one person in particular, you know, like with, uh, Angel's Envy, you can definitely say hey, this is Lincoln Henderson. Um, with Papa's Pilar, it's a team of blenders that help to go out into the, you know, the different distilleries and pick out which barrels that they want, which, um, you know, which rums that they're really going to blend together. That's going to make the product the way that they want so, it to turn out. So they're, they buy raw mm-hmm. spirit basically, mm-hmm. but they, they handcrafted, hand selected some of the best producers in in the world correct and then they buy the raw spirit where do they blend and house it um right now it's being blended in um bars down kentucky oh, okay um, yep if you like look on the side of the bottles they're gonna it'll give you, you might like as well detail, blend there but, i mean uh, that's where you're doing all the rest <laughs> of your phenomenal magic you know um but uh yeah we actually we will be opening our distillery our our blending um station down in key west oh. um it will be opening at the end of june that's and amazing like the okay Papa's Pilar Rum experience not gonna want to miss that wow <laughs> that's amazing so it's gonna open up and uh, it's going to be a phenomenal experience. Now, yeah. is that going to be down by the Hemingway House? Six Toad Cats, Jason. <laughs> I hope you're listening. I they're mean, there. They're real. <laughs> that, that's so you know, weird. pretty much everything in Key West is right next to each other. It's not that yeah. big of a place. I know. I'm just having fun. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that's going to be a really big. You know, it's it's a real what big is that? deal for us. It, and it should happen at the end of June. Um, you know, it's headed um, right now by a guy named Carlton Grooms, who's uh, very well known in the rum um, industry, and he's going to be you know being in charge of that right now. Just Pedal to the metal, what a, you know. <laughs> what a great, what, what a great concept and dynamic concept to have in Key West uh, mm-hmm. to, to add that whole Hemingway esque aspect to it. I mean, it's just going to take. And the great thing about Key West is, is people come from all over the world. You ever notice that? And it's funny because you don't think about it because you live in Florida. You go to Orlando, of course, you ex- you expect to see like everybody from all over the world taking their kids to Disney, right? But then when you go to Key West, you don't realize you're like walking down Duval Street, and then there's somebody from Sweden and China and Japan <laughs> and Russia and and never been Indonesia you don't that and, here? and and, and what. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> we need to go to Key West. You never I been to Key to... West, no, dude. Oh, Please my tell me that. Me, dude? You'll have right. to come I lived, to it. And I lived June. in New York for like we... ten years, and never went to New York City. Never went to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, that's different. That's you got to take a ferry. Key to West there. is much more fun than the Statue of Liberty. No, you got to take a ferry to get to Key West too. You don't have to, but they're running all the time. Promise me that you'll let me go on the trip that we take Rob to Key West. So yeah, we'll take a trip. Everyone's got to come. Pamela, are we all going down to the Hemingway kickoff? One hundred percent. Okay, when is that? June? June. Uh, it should well, be around June. We, right. say we could go next month. End of June? It might be July. <laughs> you know but, uh, it'll I got a place. The summer. I got a place I can stay if I can summer. bum a ride and some drinks. Then I, free, I have a car free trip. If you, if you need a ride, you know? I'll ride on top. Well, you know, it's great. <laughs> like a drag. Like, we have that coming in. You know, it, and in Key West, I mean, there's not a bigger name than Ernest Hemingway. I mean, they have no, the really Hemingway isn't. days. They have like, people, just right. thousands that, and thousands of people. Thus, thus to my point that cruise ships come in and people from all over the world. And what better way to really spread the the name mm-hmm. and uh, and the, the namesake of the brand and and the fact that it is legit mm-hmm. Hemingway. 
It, it, is, ain't, like, it ain't just some, it ain't some BS, man. It's, it's, uh, it's the the Hemingway Estates, their rum, and it doesn't get more legit than that. And it's such a quality product, folks. There's a lot of crap out there in the world that people put their name on that just sucks. And this mm. is such great stuff, and it just brings me such joy. You could just pour a little bit, and it's just the most amazing the rum. Way. In the world, uh-huh, like nice. and they have such great swag. I mean, <laughs> awesome. I have I use Papa's Pilar swag. Let me tell you something. I've been in the business, thing, and everybody tries to steal it. From I've me. been in the business twenty years, okay, and I have swag from everybody three ways from Sunday. I've sold wine, beer, and spirits for as long as you can remember, right. and the only swag that I really use is the Papa's yeah. Pilar stuff. <laughs> that I give so I absolutely and, uh, love it. Ernest Hemingway actually copied my slogan. I let him the stuff is legit. Never a spectator. Yeah, that's, he got that from me. Really, yeah. never a spectator. Never a spectator. <laughs> and, and the fact that you know, that's why I don't watch the sports. You had our brand manager on before Lindsay cops and she's yes, like she's, she's awesome you know she right, went, went right there and went and she's the one who goes and gets all of our and I want to thank I want to thank Lindsay products, for, yeah. for all the support to buy the glass show and I also thank Aaron yeah Aaron Bros. Aaron big shout out to Aaron uh-huh. Bros. he's he's awesome and he's he such awesome. a nice guy and there's not a, there's not enough people like that in this world and in this industry and we really appreciate the support here at buy the glass and we will always support Papa's Pilar and, uh, and and Angel's Envy and everything else that comes from you guys and you guys are amazing uh, absolutely amazing and we absolutely love it. We also want to thank Ed Roberts for putting oh, this all together. Ed. I don't think Ed gets enough uh, thanks because he's always behind the scenes and uh, making it happen. And uh, we want to thank him very much. Jason couldn't be here tonight, but uh, I know that he, he always misses the best shows. So when Jason doesn't show up, I know it's going to be the greatest shows because he always misses the best shows. Definitely want to thank Pamela <laughs> Obanda for coming in here and really going above and beyond, making some wonderful stuff. We're not done yet, but if I get too drunk and start to ramble, I won't get to it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I just want to do all hey, Brad, this now. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Are we gonna are we gonna get to try the the rye? We were gonna do that right now. We'll try the <laughs> rye and we'll pair it with some tiramisu. What do you say? Oh, okay, fantastic. So let's bust that open. I also want to say, hey, uh, it is Valentine's it. Day, so stay home with the loved one. Be safe. Get sloppy together, but do not drink and drive. Do not overconsume. Do not drink until you're 21. If you're uh, pregnant, wait the nine months. The kid will thank you. And uh, please always enjoy all these wonderful products responsibly. Okay. Heaven can wait. That's right. So. What we want to do now is we want to try this wonderful rye. And we looked at the point of difference with the rye, and that happens to be the fact that the rye adjunct grain is used. And we talked a little bit about the difference between rye and different types of barleys. Mainly it doesn't have a husk, but also the fact that it's a little bit more of a, I think it adds like a more of a spicy note, not necessarily as, 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 as um, sharp as pepper, not necessarily as um, pronounced as maybe like a caraway seed. I think a lot of people think caraway when they think of rye. That's not it at all. That's just the seed they use in the bread. It's not really what gives it that fennel f- taste. It's I love not it a when fen- they use it in beer. It's good, but it's not a fennel taste like that caraway seed. That's what gives it yeah, that taste. Yeah. It's not, that's not rye. Rye is just, what's your, what's your best description of rye and the distinction between the you two? You know, a lot of times when you have a rye, it's going to have a little bit of a bitterness to it. It's going to be, you know, but um, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised, I think, with this one. Um, This does not taste like any other rye that I've ever had. Um, This, like I said, this is our rye. This is 95% rye, and it's been um, finished in Caribbean rum barrels that actually they formerly house Plantation XO rum. That is exquisite. (laughs) It's 100 proof, too, so. That's probably one of the best. At 100 proof, you can't even never. What's she doing now? (laughs) She's pouring the uh, rye. Into the cake. Into that's, our like super ghetto style plate here, but yes. Yes, that's how we do things on By the Glass Show. A little bit ghetto, a little bit. Super classy. Yes, super classy and ghetto, all in one. So, ghetto is the new classy. Anyway, so fantastic. Can we have some? Uh, can we have some uh, paper towels, please? Because we're making a mess over here. Yeah. It's such fun. Sure, let's use the real ones. Around. I don't know. He's like, can we please use the real ones? Yeah. So this is amazing. Daddy, now I'm I'm from New York and I'm and I'm Italian. Yo, I'm from and New I York. Used, and I used to make, I, and my favorite, uh, uh, when we walk into the you know, the bakeries and stuff, I used to get the rum babas. Those are my favorite. Are you making kind of your own little rum baba here type of thing? Or you what? know what? This is a, a chocolate cake that I got from uh, from Whole Foods. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's got nice mousse with it. But if you take, you've tasted the rye now, you, you no, taste those like tasted. amazing, almost it's, like a creme brulee type it's taste to it. It's mm-hmm. 100 proof that I honestly, I just don't think it's, that you can take that you would creamy. know that it was 100 proof. Never in a million years Ever. would you know this is 100 proof. Um, and it just has like, it has so many nuances to it because of the barrels, like the rum barrels that it's finished in, they formerly house cognac. So like it has a little bit from that too. It has like almost like a cinnamon spice to it. So if you, uh, 
A really simple this is way like to... one of my favorite <laughs> spirits I've ever had in my life. So You know clean. how many spirits we taste on this show? How many it's spirits warm, I it's taste? It's creamy. Like, it's just, it's yeah. nice. I, I taste spirits like all day, and this mm. is like ridiculous. This is the best. <laughs> this is. This is really good. There's no bite on the finish. It's all full flavored. All mm-hmm. those nuances. Of no food, bite. It says creme no brulee. Bite There's just like sweetness. Right. And, and just like all those yeah, dried really. fruits. And just the vanilla is very prominent. Vanilla spice, and it's just it just brings it right to the threshold. But it seems like the creaminess of the rye kind of envelops it all is and, this, and puts is this it into one pocket. With, with those flavors, and no, <laughs> man, it's natural. That's straight from the barrels themselves. Nothing. Uh, wow. No coloring or flavoring added. And uh, I'm gonna dissolve some vanilla beans we've done, in here. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> we've done we've yeah. done a ton of shows on whiskeys. We've done rye shows in the past. We've had a whole whole shows rec- uh, dedicated to rye. Which, if you go yeah. to buytheglassshow.com, they're all on there. But never in my life have I tasted a rye like this. <laughs> now, I was freaking out over candy. the Papa's Pilar Dark, which is probably the, one of the best rums I've ever tasted in my well, life. Double gold winner in the World Spirits Competition. <laughs> it's unbelievable. A month before we even officially launched. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely. I, I think <laughs> I have pretty awesome. good taste, man, because this is the best. And, and this Angel's Envy, it just knocked my socks off. The rye, it's, it's really, it's my style because, I mean, I love the, I love the regular stuff, but I mean, this has something extra to it that's just it, it takes it over the top for me it's that you know that, that f- a little bit more fruitiness maybe and a little bit more of smoothness that just really puts the balance in this in this wonderful wonderful libation so mm. this is I awesome love it. what I a mean, great I show just, what a great it. drinks <laughs> so <clears throat> we just have been sitting here oh no well, yeah show. like what Let's so, put that cake in the middle and start yeah, getting at it. Go ahead and put Ooh. that there. Yeah. Wow. That. Brett has like, to talk because he's the host, and so that's right. <laughs> Not a problem. I'll talk as you guys shove stuff mm-hmm. your face, but uh, oh man, fantastic! <laughs> yeah, you dropped the part with the rum. I mean, with the bourbon. <laughs> We're not worried about Rob. He's and, a professional. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna try a little of this myself. That's like probably the easiest way to you know to impress somebody right there is. The cake uh, is acting like some sort of a sponge. <laughs> it's you know, really great. It sponges up that alcohol right in there. Mm-hmm. You can do this with a lot of different types of cakes, too. You can do you it know, with an uh, angel food cake. Oh, yeah. hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. This is so <laughs> complimentary. <laughs> yeah. There's no bitterness at all. Normally, like, you know, with an alcohol cake, you can taste it. Mm-hmm. It's all you know what balancing. the good part is, too? As you can have your rye in your snifter mm-hmm. and be eating mm-hmm. your rye infused mm-hmm. cake, mm-hmm. and then everybody's it, happy. Clean, Everybody. you know, clean the rye, <laughs> clean the cake out of your palate with the rye, and it's smooth enough and light enough to where it's just like perfect. Yeah. Wow. And the, cool, the cool thing is, it's like desserts. you can do it like this. The other, like this is like a, this is like it's kind of like a party trick, and you know whatever, but it's. You can throw that in a blender. <laughs> wow! And, you know, man. you take that, you throw that oh, cake man. in a blender with a little bit of the rye. That's why your boss, you said or that. you throw, or you throw uh, <laughs> like a key lime pie, a slice of key lime pie with uh, Papa's Pilar Blonde and like a little wow. bit of the dark, and blend that up with a little ice, and you make yourself like it does one of the greatest little mm. uh, cocktails ever. For I have a magic parties. bullet that's got the individual little glasses. <laughs> now I know what I want to do with it. You cake. We're gonna blend cake and and oh. rye. <clears throat> Don't tell them. Don't no, tell everybody what you did. That, uh, did you give a name wow. to this cocktail? Friend, <clears throat> I yeah, thought this was, was this an original? Yep. No, and what's it in is. it? What's in it? Oh, so check. that's going to have lemon sorbet, um, Papa's Pilar Blonde, uh, hibiscus syrup, um, and limoncello. Oh, and Prosecco. And Prosecco. Wow. All right. Let me work on it. We got <laughs> two Come minutes on, before the show mm. ends. Okay. Well, George, okay. look at what Brain it looks going like. To work. Lemon, it's hibiscus. Hibiscus is Florida. Lemon and citrus is Florida. Rum. 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 Rum in the world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hibiscus is how about just how about something like garnish? how about something it's for the, Florida pink. and traditional uh-huh. Florida and it's pink and uh, how about like a pink flamingo? Well, I feel like that's a cocktail already. I've that that <laughs> never heard of a pink flamingo. Have you? No, you can't do that. <laughs> ah, you suck. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I th- yeah, it sounds sounds like it would be. Uh, sounds like somebody's got that already. Cheater. Cheater. <laughs> All right, rum. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, George, man, I'm charge here. You're this? blowing it, dude. Florida, fl- <laughs> the Florida flower. There's Florida the flower. Florida okay, flower. that really sucks. No. Because uh, <laughs> I think I don't know if the hibiscus is Papa's the state flower of Florida, flower. but I, I mean, oh, I would. How about how about how about Georgie's little helper? <laughs> yeah, there you go, no, Georgie's that's, little helper. That's that's Adderall. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry to use. <laughs> okay, delete, delete, delete. so let's uh, get the show over. Hey, George, got you. Right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> That's what happens when what you, you start like, off the show with a cast strength. <laughs> yeah, you got Cap- capsules or tablets. That right? happens every week anyway, no matter what. <laughs> I always love the end of the show so much more than the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow, all the alcohol causes it to degenerate coincidentally. Wow. No, but the beauty of some so what of is these the spirits name? is that the quality. It's Georgie's little helper. No, the Florida flower. Oh, the Florida flower. Yeah, that's because that's hibiscus, better. citrus, rum. Rum is a, a Florida thing. Well, it's a Caribbean thing. It is. Well, yeah. I think it's you need to take some thing. time and work on that. Name. It is. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Pamela Obando. Uh, just you know, for coming in and sharing some time with us. It's been an oh, absolute pleasure. Thank you pleasure. so much for having me. You are me. enlightening. <laughs> you're, you're, you're wonderful, and uh, we really we think that these are some. Of, I think that these are the best spirits, uh, top of the category. You know, no doubt about it. And it's not just what I say. You know, San Francisco, too. So we love you guys out there. Everybody have a wonderful evening and have a great Valentine's Day. Broadcasting from the heart of downtown Hollywood, this is SoFloRadio.com.